This is the introduction to the migration unit of this course. First, we need to define migration. Migration is the permanent move to a new place. Uh, permanent doesn't mean for the rest of your life, it just means for a decently long time. Uh, there are two types of immigration that we need to talk about, two types of migration. First is immigration. I've underlined the EM for a reason. That's because this will be referred to in this way later on in the presentation. Uh, immigration means a move from a location. If you want to help if you want help to remember this, you can think of it as exiting. People exiting, you have an E in exit, an E in emigration. The other type of migration is called immigration. Uh, and that is a move to a new location. Uh, and if you want to help, help remember that, there's an I in in, there's an I in immigration. So, those are our two major types of migration. Now, once we have those two statistics for a country, you can determine what is called the net migration. The net migration is the difference between the number of immigrants and emigrants. If a country has net in migration, that means that they have more immigrants, people coming into the country, than they have emigrants, people leaving the country or city. An example of this for a U.S. city that I've put up here is Dallas-Fort Worth because more people move to Dallas-Fort Worth than move away from Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, another way to think about this is if a country, a city, or a state has net out migration. Net out migration means that you have more people leaving, immigrants, than you have people coming in, immigrants. An example American city uh, that I've written on here is Detroit. Uh, now let's look at mobility. Mobility uh, is simply any movement from one place to another. Uh, there's a term that we need to know and that is circulation. Circulation is repetitive moves, repetitive, repetitive movements away from your home. There are two types uh, that are mentioned in this course. One is called cyclic, and that is short-term moves from your house, movements from your house, meaning you start at home, you go to the store, and then you go back home. This is something people do every week, uh, every, maybe every day for some families. Another type of circulatory or circulation uh, mobility movement is known as seasonal, and that can last for months. Uh, an example of this would be a college student going from home to their college town and then back home for the holidays or summer. Uh, another example of this would be a soldier going from his home or her home to the military and then back home again. Uh, so why do people migrate? That's the first thing that we need to understand. Uh, there was a cartographer who lived in the 1800s. His name was E.G. Robinstein. Uh, he was of German and English descent. Uh, and he came up with some laws of migration that are still pretty important today. Uh, the first thing that he came up with in his laws were the three types of push and pull factors for migration. Uh, you should have known this from the past, but if you don't, let's give a little refresher. Push factors are bad things. Things that want to push you out of a country. Uh, pull factors are good things, hence the smiley face, uh, that are good things that pull you into the country. Uh, so he had three main types. The first type of push and pull factors are economic. Economics are the main reason why people move from one place to another because they want to make more money or they want to go to a place with better job opportunities. So economic push factors are bad jobs or low amount of jobs, low paying jobs, anything where the job market is not good, people don't usually don't want to live there. Uh, a pull factor for economics uh, is better jobs, more job opportunities, better paying jobs, uh, maybe better benefits like vacation or health benefits. These are reasons why people move. That's probably the number one reason why people move uh, these days, why they migrate. Uh, another type of push-pull factor uh, are cultural. The push factors for cultural would be slavery, people who were uh, physically forced 
uh, into slavery. Uh, or you also have what are called refugees. Refugees are people who are fleeing something. Uh, either, and most of the time it's because of war. Uh, either war or oppressive governments that push them away from their homeland. Uh, some pull factors for culture are freedoms. Those are the main ones. Uh, economic freedoms, religious freedoms, and freedom of speech. Uh, the last type of push-pull factors are known as environmental. And the push factors for environmental are disasters. This is a flood, I promise, even though it looks like a blue shrub or something. Uh, this is flood water, and it's bad because uh, people hate living in flooded areas. Uh, it's, it's not good. Uh, this is a tornado. And then this is an angry sun who brings drought upon the people because he's mad. Because the sun can have emotions? Sure. Uh, a pull factor for environment are attractive places like mountains uh, where you can go hiking and skiing and it's just people sometimes like to live near mountains. Uh, this is a beach chair, I promise, with a little umbrella. Uh, people like to live near coastlines uh, because it's, the weather is decent. Uh, and then finally, warm places. This happy sun represents warmth. Uh, not worth, warmth. Uh, warmth. A, pe people like to live in warm areas. Now, I don't mean hot, oppressive, angry sun, warm areas. I just mean, like, generally warm areas. Uh, and then another thing that we need to consider are what are called intervening obstacles. Intervening obstacles are barriers to migration. These can be physical, such as mountains or rivers or oceans, or they can be cultural, uh, like politicians or governments that won't let their people leave for whatever reason. So now that we've talked about why people migrate, let's talk about, ah, uh, that fell, and, or almost. So, yay, but I'm not dead, and that's awesome. Uh, so, here we have distance of migration. Uh, when you see the acronym EGR, that is E.G. Ravenstein, uh, he believed in the 1800s that most people uh, move short amounts of distance and they stay in their same country or in their same region. And he also believed that people that move long distances, uh, they are to major, this is major, but the marker got wiped off, uh, major economic centers. Uh, so there are two types of, uh, there's two types of migration overall, internal and international. And then in those two types, there are two more like subtypes. Uh, and internal migration. Internal migration means that you stay in your same country. So there are two types of internal migration. One is interregional. That means that you move from one region of your country to another. For example, you move from Texas to New York City. We're clearly moving to a different region. The other type is intraregional. Intraregional means that you move a, to a different place within your own region. For example, moving from Dallas to Austin or moving from Dallas to Oklahoma City because Oklahoma City is in the same basic region as Texas. Uh, then we have international migration. Uh, this is moving from one country to another. So international migration moves from one country to another. There are two types of uh, international migration. One is voluntary, which is usually pull factors. Uh, well, and it could be push, I guess, if you're choosing to leave because of a war or a bad government. But voluntary simply means that people choose to move to another country. Then there is also forced migration uh, internationally, which means that you are forced to move to another country for whatever reason. Uh, and those are usually al those are always push factors. <clears throat> so finally, please don't fall on me, board. Please don't fall on me, board. Uh, finally, we have characteristics of migrant people. Uh, Robinstein believed in the 1800s that most long-distance migrants were men. Uh, he believed that because uh, back then men were seen as sort of the breadwinners or the ones who would go out and find work. Uh, they were the mo more likely to work than women in the 1800s. Uh, and he also believed that most immigrants were individual adults with more kids. Uh, so let's look at today. Uh, today, 55% of immigration to, you, to the United States are females. They're not mostly males like Robinstein believed because times have changed. Uh, also, in the as, early, uh, as, as recently as the 1980s, 
85% of Mexican immigrants to the United States were males. Today that has changed and the, the ratio is about 50-50 male and female uh, people moving from Mexico to the US. Uh, and as far as the age goes of immigrants, 40% uh, of uh, immigrants are around the ages of 25 to 39 in the United States. However, uh, the percentage of children who are immigrating to the United States is also increasing.